Hey guys, it's Andy and Andrew. Welcome back to another video. Um, different angle for you guys today. Um, spent a couple of days working on some... Say hi, Andrew. <laughs> spent a couple of days working on some pieces um, for storage because I'm just tired of the whole messy desk syndrome here. And so I did this piece back here that is holding the acrylic blocks and my planner, the small scoreboard, rulers, and this is a stamp set I wanted to try to work with, so it's there. Um, and these two pieces are from using uh, Sam, 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 what's a um, mixed up craft. Um, that's her design there. Yeah, this was foam board. I'm not good with working with foam board, so it's a little lopsided, but it works. It serves a purpose. This one, I just kind of winged up some measurements last night and did on my own um, to hold tools. This is just a block a box from I think Dollar Tree or Dollar General, one of those. Um, today, I want to address the paint brushes because it's like it flows all nice and neatly then we get to the paint brushes and like yeah not so much so and that's all pretty organized there so and that's all this was the other piece that i put together um just to hold some post-it notes my first my tools that i grab regularly and i designed this one to fit on the two boxes of daubers that we have um we get another box i'm gonna have to or something else out but until then um this is this is gonna work so let me pop the camera up here and i'll show you what we're going to work with okay guys so i guess this is what we're going to attempt to work with today this is just a piece of leftover chipboard from the yellow box that's holding the tools but we found these how and why i do not know but we found a stack of these at Dollar Tree a while back about a month or so ago yeah, two months ago it's been a while since yeah. we've been to Dollar Tree so it's been at least a couple of months ago um, but these are two 12 by 12 black cord chipboard sheets and they they're pretty pretty substantial so if you don't have that um, I did pull out cereal box which I don't it may be a little flimsy you may have to double up on that but I'm going to attempt to use this first let's get this out of the way well crap to me to have stuff hitting the floor well it's gonna have to lay there or I'm gonna make y'all sick by pushing or hitting the cord for the phone Alrighty. Should have had this already, but this is one of those last minute, I wonder, moment things. Alright, so we got a trimmer. And this has an old crappy blade in, which seems to work really well with chipboard. And my, no, that's from the little one. My quick little layout here of what I want, size I need going to be four inches tall and seven inches wide which is the size I need to fit that the top of that um, shelf there so that Andrew and I can both reach from either side of the, the desk so that being said I need two everything's going to be cut four inches tall I'm going to need two pieces at seven inches by four inches and two pieces at four inches by four inches so let's start here at the four and I know I'm going to have to do this from both sides when you do this make sure you flip your piece over and put it back in or you're going to score on the wrong side and give yourself a 
messed up piece. Could use the blade, which I may have to. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to. Um, but I can at least get a good score in there, so that'll give me my this thing. I'm not good with exacto knives, utility knives and yeah. This is usually where I'm like, hey, Andrew, help. But it's pretty much already scored through, so provided I can stay on the right dang on line. There it goes. So there's our four inch. I think I'm just gonna keep doing it like that. We need two four by four pieces for our sides. see bad things happen and I try to do that. Put our blade in there. Okay. There's one four by four. If you're confident with a utility knife, go right ahead and go ahead and start slicing. I'm not that confident. Right, so there's that. And that'll give me an extra 4x4. Four four. Make sure I got that in my groove kind of reminds me of cutting drywall where you get this score line and you can just bend it and snap it and then just cut the paper from the other side. Should be eight because we cut four inches off. Yes. So let's go ahead and cut this down to our seven, and then we'll just split that in half, and that'll give us our two seven inch sheets. Actually came loose on its own. I'll take that. Um, let's see how we're gonna fix this right quick. There we go. That'll work. I will take that. So we are it. Should be seven inches this way. No. Seven inches that way. So now we'll split this to four this way. Not 
too, too worried about these edges because they're going to get covered. I thought about with the black that I could just matte paper on there, but I don't have anything else black up there. And I don't want one oddball piece, so... I know I do want to use sheet of paper I pulled out. I only had two sheets of this out of the pack. Love this bird and that's what I used on the, the box with the two drawers. This is called Chateau from Craft Smart. I think I might use the yellow on it again. I like the little box. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Alright. Andrew, can I use the, the good paper trimmer? The trimmer I've been using, I, it works good for um, chipboard, but the blade's crap for... Um, here's your... Blade, yeah, the blade's crap for for that um, paper. All right, so our pieces here. Move these pieces so I don't grab them by mistake. Won't be the first time I've done that. Um, I really want to get these birds in here. I want them on the front. I know it's not going to give me much of a fold over for an edge, but... Um, thinking how I want to do this. this like I said, this is not planned. This is me thinking on the fly here um, because the paper's not going to be big enough. I don't want, unless I cover everything individual and glue it together. Hmm. Because I definitely want that panel on the front. For sure. It's just that bird is just, I don't know why, but I'm drawn to that bird. Um, I only have one sheet of the yellow left. Let's see if we have two sheets of something left here. sheets of that left. Got two sheets of that. Hmm. I suppose I could go with this. mixed this pattern and this um, or this paper come on come on and I had two of these I must have really liked it that I picked up two but um, the other one's just about all but it's called the Rose Cottage from my recollections and some of the paper actually has played really well with this chateau as well like like that I have used this hmm. now the hardest part of any project choosing the blessed paper I like that green 
I really like that green. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to go with that green. Now you all are probably sitting there on the other end and going, just pick a color already. Third time's a charm, right? So they say. Birdie aside. Let's move this trimmer aside. That's going to be the panel for that. These three are going to get green. You know what? I'm a, I'm a ding -a -ling. I did not need. I did not need two sheets of that. I only needed one. Because those are only four inch panels. Ergo. I can cut this in half and have just enough to cover it. Oh my goodness gracious. Stroke braid. Yeah, <laughs> it's just stroke braid. So I could have used the yellow. But you know what? I like the green. I'm going to go with the green. I don't have a green background up here yet. So green it's going to be. And I'm not worried that the braiding's in the opposite direction. Andrew might growl because he's going to be the one to see that, but. Sure stuff, you do it however you want. Typically, I am OCD enough that it has to be going the right direction, but it's not. It's real faint, so it's not like it's going to be in your face. So layer these together with a little bit of glue. And this is how I've done the others, and they're holding up really well from endless pulling the drawers out, picking things up, moving it around to finally get things organized. And I'm quite enjoying having a clean desk. All right. I have to think about a bottom for that box. I did not make a bottom. Well, crud. Well, we'll think about that while we're putting this together. Alrighty. So, instead of guessing how much space I'm going to need here, I'm going to put that in the middle of that join. And pour chipboard up here. Let's just glue this down. Okay. Make sure we get enough in there to bend. that now. I'm going to guess that that's probably about an eighth, eighth of an inch there, not quite a quarter. sure everything's all even at the edges. There we go. Alright, I'll give that a second. In the meantime, I'm going to keep a 
up here in this corner. I'm sure I can't be the only one that has paper that it's like, oh, I don't want to use it. I can't use that paper. That paper's too pretty. But putting it on a project like this, you can... I can at least look at the birds now and not just have to flip open the book and see it. Right, so yeah, he's on there good now. And I think, oh, I just want to fold that up. I think I may just fold that up around. Let's let that set up a minute and come back to this piece. And something else just went on the floor. I'm just going to trim some of this off. Hey, more paper for more flowers! You really want to be careful when you glue paper together. If something's going to crack, that's usually the first place it's going to crack. So far, with either one of these pads, I've not had any cracking at all, which I'm really surprised with it being a, just a craft smart paper, but I don't mind working with it. It's not flimsy. So far, it hasn't cracked. Let's give ourselves some lines there to scissors in the office to cut something small. Oh, I'm just mitering these corners out. Um, if you've never done that, when I folded this, I folded it down and I folded these pieces in. So that has left an intersection here. Basically what I'm doing is taking my scissors and I'm coming in this way and in this way to cut right across that, that intersection right there and right here. What that's going to allow is when these pieces fold up, they're going to come across to each other. Now that one here, I got a booger on, so we're going to cut that off. Okay. Now the other thing we're going to face here, see when we fold this up, we're getting wrinkles. To avoid that, I think I'm going to cut some... I need notches in there. Or is it going to cooperate enough when I glue it that I'm not going to need notches? 
I think it's going to be fine. Um, sometimes when you fold pieces in like that, you'll want to cut little, the same V-shaped notches. You're going to want to cut them out there um, if your paper doesn't want to fold over. It wants to buckle on you. What are you working on today? I don't know yet. He'll have to show you his box he built. He built himself a box to hold the scoreboard and trimmer and stuff that he uses. He and my brother did a lot of shifting things around um, over the past week. So I'll have to give you a walkthrough. He has things organized really well. Yeah, that one's put away. Now the fun part's remembering where we put it. I know we have it. Where did it go? I don't know. I put it. And the fun part is like you can. Something's a, in disarray. You can tell. Somebody exactly where something's at. As soon as you put it away, it's like, um, where did it go? Oh, that's right. It's right there where it should have been the entire time. That's where it's at. start trying to use my fingernails here and push that paper down in to make sure I'm getting that corner in there and we only need it to bend at a right angle you don't need to stretch it any further Using just regular old wet glue, um, reptile glue. Works good to quick grab. I haven't had any paper lifting with it. I'm not fond of tape. Dang on humidity here. Everything we do with tape seems to lift, and I don't want to put time into something and use quality product for something and it fall the crap apart. looks pretty doggone good. Alrighty, that being said, let's get out this panel. Now this is definitely not a traditional way. I'm sure some people put a box together, but because I want a specific panel on here, this is how I'm doing it. And there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm not worried about edges being straight because this is all getting covered. It's not going to be seen. All this because I wanted that doggone bird right there. up a little bit. So it's going to be hard for me to tell you what the exact measurements of the paper are because this was, I split that 12 by 12 and a half so that was 6 inches, laid the pieces out and cut the ends off. So that was 24 by 6 and then cut down. This is just 
this piece is seven by four, so I would that's about an extra inch of paper. I would say five by eight. But I mean, for me, I like having the bigger pieces to fold in, like I did on the green one. But this is smaller. Oh, geez, I forgot to take my corners out. Um, this is obviously smaller, like I said, because of that dang on bird. Honestly, really don't even measure much when I'm doing projects um, off the top of my head for chipboard. Um, I just lay it down and cut around it and glue it down. I don't know if I'm going to have enough scrap here that I could... I do still have that in a pile. There's my this being smaller I'm going to need this gonna work that glue up around. I can do it better with my fingers than with a bone folder. Just slowly pushing that further and further down into the onto the top of the board. And it's working that glue into the edge. You can do it that way. I'm not comfortable doing it that way. I like to get in there with my fingers and I can feel if there's an air bubble. to dry fit stuff first before I make the commitment to put the glue on because too many times I've had to tear things apart because it's not going to fit or it's just a little wonky yet. And we'll go around the corners and flatten them out so they're not poking. I think this is definitely something could be done out of um, a cereal box, a cracker box, biscuit box, um, cookie box, whatever you have. Um, just I would, if you're going to put any kind of weight in it at all, I would double glue it together, glue two pieces together and then cut it down. There's our doggone bird. pieces I had left from yesterday putting that box together I don't think no I know it's going to be on the inside but still trim a piece down then half acid that way okay. so we know we have a piece that is seven by four this is eight by five so perfect to sit our piece on 
so this is using one 12 by 12 piece of chipboard other than the only leftover piece we'll have is one four by four square Look at that, I can put that on there and still save that bird for something. make sure that's going to fit and it is that a second to grab. <clears throat> In the meantime, let's pull out our other green piece here. And that was four inches. I'm going to cut that at three and a half by that at 14. You can't cut a piece of paper for you dangling. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to cut a 12 inch piece of paper at 14 inches. How's that sound for you? Like you've done Common Core, man. Yeah, like I've done Common Core, man. Exactly. Oh my goodness. I'm just winging this video today and it's like, like in my head it's like I know what I'm trying to do but to spit it out it just isn't all right so we're gonna cut both these pieces at three and a half inches <sighs> and glue these together sliding that paper a little bit to push that glue around. Right, so I'm just going to use I don't want that I do not want that seam on I'm just going to line that seam up with that seam. That'll work. a little nip there. A little nip there. Yeah, this is how you construct on the fly. This isn't one of these projects where everything's all cut and dry and laid out for you. And Nope. This is how you wing it. I'm just lining that little cut line that I gave myself up with the score line or the cut line and the trimmer. And that's going to give me my piece for this. I'm going to cover that up.
So now again, I'm going to go in here and make sure that that's going to fold. Don't want any buckling. See if you, you don't push that down. See how that's going to buckle. Now, if this was something that was going somewhere, I would definitely make sure this is more even on the inside and look all pretty. But it's getting paint brushes in. I'm not fussing over it. seven by four so let's cut that at six and a half by three and a half I should have left it a little bit bigger because of having the short sides, but stop it. It's just buddy down the street. Knock it off. My sister called today and her grandson was crying in the background. He was wanting his mommy and mommy had to be at work. And ours aren't used to hearing a baby fuss and oh boy. They were a little anxious for a few minutes. Alrighty, so now this is going to attach to here, just like that. Why is that? Well, that's because that paper's pushed up there. Did not catch that. Yep, let's see if we can smush it down. At this point, I'm invested. It's going together. If it has a wrinkle in it, it has a wrinkle in it. Shh. Man, buddy, really, I'm not used to hearing him bark like that. Yeah, he's really not happy. See, we've been here almost three years now. I've never heard that dog bark like that. He is agitated. Okay, so I just have my glue on there. I'm just kind of pushing down and pulling in with my fingers out front here. I want to try to keep that at as much of a right angle as I can. If you need help, if you have a grid on your board, line it up with your grid and make sure you're, you got yourself a good right angle. 90 degrees see that's going in that's too far that's what happens if you take your fingers off it's going to do that but that's not the way you want it to set up we'll insert jeopardy music or cricket sounds here about peepers can we do peepers yeah i can't wait to hear the peepers again if you live in a country i'm sure you know what those little peeper frogs are with us being right by the river oh my gosh they just sing and sing and sing all night okay i'm gonna do the same thing on this side no i don't want to lift this at this point because that glue over there is still very wet but it has crabs and that's the one thing I do like about this glue is it it grabs <clears throat> and I am not the most patient person in the world hey at least I admit it <laughs> Now, 
it's going to look a little wonky here. You can see it's not completely straight, but we'll fix that when we glue her down to the base. What did you say? Oh, nothing. Nothing mean, I promise. You said a little wonky. I said, yeah, wonky donkey. <laughs> that little story, the wonky donkey. I don't remember much. I yeah. don't remember the name. Oh my gosh, that was funny. I think she was an Irish woman reading the wonky donkey story to her grandchild. Little video clip. Oh my goodness, that poor lady, she was just laughing so hard, the tears were rolling, and like you couldn't help but chuckle along with her. Alrighty. There we go. So there's that piece. Now let's finish our base up here. I think I will take some of my scraps and cover the inside um, since it's just going to be a bottom and nobody's going to see it, but I do want to protect it a little bit. Gonna do this in the same way I did the other ones. Work that glue in and up around. <clears throat> Trying to glance off to my side here and see what four pieces I do have. <coughs> we have this blue piece, and we have that blue piece. I think I'm just going to overlap those. I'm going to put these in the trimmer. Now, the one thing I do want to make sure before I glue these down, this is going to have a little bit of a lip, and I don't want that weird looking paper sticking out. Well, crap, that might not work. You know what? We're going to do it that way. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to glue this on the bottom. 
Sometimes I just swear my brain's bone checked out completely. Goodbye, see you later, Auf Wiedersehen, Sayonara, whatever. I'm out. <laughs> As the one girl that used to live with us would say, you dipped out. Yep, yeah, my brain dipped. going the same way as the bird and there we go kind of eyeball this so I know I have it on my grid but I also want to be able to make sure I roughly have the same distance all the way around okay so line that up that one and that one alrighty here we go Let's get some glue on here. Oh, no, hearing some kind of noise in the background. We've been listening to audiobooks. Listen to a few quite interesting ones. Been listening to a podcast. Um, the girls go by morbid. It's not <laughs> not as gross as what it sounds. The one girl's an autopsy tech and the other's a cosmetologist and they do um, true crime, true yeah, true crime, um, like Lizzie Borden, um, R.E.K. That kind of. All right, now we're just gonna hold this down. It was interesting to listen to the transcripts from Lizzie Borden's trial and inquest. I've never heard that part of the the story for lack of a better word I <clears throat> if one of us remembers we'll try to put a link for them down below if you like history um, crime that kind of they don't go into any graphic detail. No, no, they don't go into any graphic detail. They just give you the the story and and they are very um, raw. <laughs> um, they're they're about our son's age. He's twenty seven, and I know they've hinted around about being mar or ma married, born in the early to mid nineties. So they're pretty close to that age. So it's like. like I'm able to relate to them because of the, the same age thing going on, but they just, oh my gosh, the, the way they are able to tell the story, it just... A little strong language from time to time, but it's nothing... I think they're, really I think they said they're out of Massachusetts yeah, and around the Providence far. area. Yeah, not far, far from Boston. But, oh my goodness, funny. Alrighty, there we go. There is our new paintbrush box. Well, I do have one of these left. I think I might like that on there.
I'm not sure. I'll think about that. But in the meantime, while I'm thinking about that, get the pliers out of there. Yeah, one of my favorite coffee mugs has become a holder. And this was actually one of the first pieces I ever made to hold brushes. And it's nothing but a soup can um, covered in paper and Mod Podged over. No, I did not put a G in there. Oh my goodness. Oh, that drives me. You know what? I may just leave that. I may leave that together. No, what I'm thinking is I may put um, a divider in here because see, they're going to go like that. I wanted the box big enough to fill that hole. I'm thinking I may have to take that 4x4 four four piece. And I think that's what hit the floor. But I think what I'm going to have to do, and I'll do it off camera. I'm just going to cover it the same way I did the others. Cover it this way, and I'm going to slip it in here. To give that some stability to hold that up. So that is what I'm going to do with that. I will post a picture here at the end. In the meantime, let's get those out of there. And at this point, if you need a decent sized box, there it is. Um, seven by four, nice and sturdy. Okay, all right guys, I hope you enjoyed that from conception to final product. And we will see you with the next video. Take care guys and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.